is just a name that's going to be interesting. All right, all right, everybody, come on in. Let's make our way to our seats. Let's stand on up if you're already there and if you're able. Uh, we're going to sing a couple songs before we have our announcements tonight. Lord, I'm a hard-fighting soldier on the battlefield. Lord, I'm a hard-fighting soldier. Oh, yeah. Lord, I'm a hard-fighting soldier I'm on the battlefield and I'll be bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I yield I've got a helmet on my head and in my hands a sword and shield I've got a helmet on my head and in my hands a sword and shield I've got a helmet on my head and in my hands a sword and shield and I'll keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I yield. You got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield. You got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right. Oh, yeah. You got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield. And I keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that, Lord, I'm a hard fighting soldier. On the battlefield, Lord, I'm a hard fighting soldier. Oh, yeah. Lord, I'm a hard fighting soldier. And I'm on the battlefield and I keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I yield. You know that Jesus is my captain and he fights my battle still. He has never lost a battle and I know he never will. I got the word for my sword and I've got faith for my shield and I keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I yield. When I die, let me die in the service of the Lord. When I die, let me die in the service of the Lord. And when I die, let me die in the service of of the Lord, and I keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I heal. Lord, I'm a hard fighting soldier. Don't you know I'm a hard fighting soldier? Oh, yeah. Lord, I'm a hard fighting soldier on the battlefield, and I keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I heal. And I'll keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I yield. And I'll keep bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I yield. Amen. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost, I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. Well, I went down. To the river to pray. Well, I went down to the river to pray. Well, I went down to the river. I felt so good, I could have stayed all day. All my sins are washed away, and I've been redeemed. And that's not all, there's more beside. And that's not all, there's more beside, 
And that's not all there's more beside. I've been to the river, been baptized. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I feel with the Holy Ghost. I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Filled with the Holy Ghost, I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. Amen. Hey, Amen, church. Please be seated. We got some announcements for you tonight. First announcement is going to be that the staff applications for the Florida Teen Camp in 2024 uh, are still open. The deadline is April 1st, so that is Monday. Uh, so if you would like to serve, uh, you know, it is definitely needed. Uh, you know, the, the volunteers are really what makes camp for the teens in Florida amazing. So scan that QR code or go to the website and apply before Monday. Uh, this Saturday, the pros are going to have a March Madness event at Gary Orr's house. Uh, so Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, let, let Shashank know if you are uh, going to be attending uh, and you can bring something. It's going to be an awesome time uh, just to watch some, some basketball and, and hang out. And then this Sunday is Easter Sunday already. Uh, so... Again, we do have invitations in the lobby. Just encourage you guys to grab those invitations uh, and just really be inviting people. It's going to be an awesome time of, of extended worship. We're going to take us through the story of the cross and the resurrection uh, with, with some scripture reading and song and narration. So it's going to be a really powerful time. Uh, so really encourage you to invite people out. That is one of, the, you know, one of two or three days a year that people absolutely go to church. Uh, so let's take advantage of that and really try and get people in and let them hear the word. And on the back of that invitation, so you got two for one, uh, you can also invite them to the Spring Festival, which is happening the next week, April 7th at 10 a.m. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a bounce house for the kids. Uh, it's going to be our potluck that we always have, uh, and it's always a good time over at the Sullivan's Farm. And then April 13th, if you want to mark your calendars, we have our canned food drive that we're doing. Uh, so we're going to be passing out the bags to the neighborhood. Uh, this is definitely the section that we need the volunteers. Uh, because if we only have a few people, I remember last year it was like me and Corey doing a whole neighborhood, and it took a long time. Uh, and I think we had to come back later that night. Like he, he dragged a bunch of campus students there to, to finish the job for him. Uh, so if you're able to help, April 13th, we're going to meet here at the building at 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to get a bunch of bags. Uh, they're going to be prepared. So we just take the bags. We put them on the doorstops in the neighborhood. Super easy. And if we have a lot of people, it takes like an hour top. So mark your calendars. Come on out. It's a great way to serve. Uh, and it's, it really doesn't take that much time, but it's an awesome way to meet a lot of needs uh, uh, and then April 13th as well at 8 p.m., uh, there's a Young Marriage Devo, but that's going to be on Zoom. Uh, so just mark that in your calendar that you have a Zoom meeting at 8 p.m. on April 13th. Uh, it should be a great time. Those are, those are always really beneficial, I know, for me and Victoria. Uh, so all the Young Marrieds, make sure we turn out for that uh, so that we can just share with each other and, and learn from, from the elders. So it's the 20th now. Okay, so... I am getting just in, this just in. Uh, <laughs> the canned food drive is the next week, so it's the 20th. Uh, so so that, is, that has been shifted to the 20th, uh, so not the 13th, but the 20th. Uh, Young Mary's Devo is April 13th on Zoom. Uh, and then tonight, uh, we have the elders speaking on find out what pleases the Lord, talking about uh, just finding our gifts and, and how we can serve the church uh, it's going to be a great time. Uh, so at this time, we're going to have our prayer for the sick.
Let's pray together. Uh, dear me, Father God, we uh, thank you so much, uh, God, for the opportunity <coughs> we have to come together in the middle of the week to uh, lift up petitions and prayers to you. Uh, for those who are sick, for those who are going through difficult times, God, for those who are going through treatments. Father, we continually pray for Dean Limbaugh, Levy Howard, and Herb Rodriguez. God, we pray for uh, their treatment of cancer. God, we pray that you heal them, be with them as they go through this. God, we are just grateful that they are with us, and God, that we can still uh, encourage them. Father, we pray uh, for our brother Dave Shula, who is uh, home now from surgery, but God is still struggling and still going through a lot of pain. Father, we pray that you will be with Dave, be with the doctors. God, I pray that the surgery will work and the things that are going on with him uh, will get better. God, that he will be restored and brought back to us, uh, hopefully by this Sunday. Father, we continually pray for Trudy Forbush, uh, who's got uh, cancer. God, as well as we are praying for Pat Tynes' brother, uh, Neil Wickerson uh, with End Stage Parkinson's. Father, we thank you for the news of uh, Betty Warren's daughter, uh, uh, Patsy. Uh, God, she had hip replacement. God, we pray and thank you that it went well, and we continually pray that you will uh, restore her. Father, we have been praying for Tiffany Latimer. She's a friend of the Callens. God, we're praying for her. She needs a bone marrow transplant, and we, God, we pray that you will provide that. God, so that she as well can be healed. Father, we are thankful that our sister September is home. God, we pray that you will be with her right now. She's recovering uh, from pneumonia as well as COPD. God, be with her as well, and God, that she will uh, also be able to be with us soon. Father, we thank you for the progress of Bob Cantway's sister, Laura. God, we continually pray for her recovery. God, as well as for Kathy Dykes, who's recovering at home as well. Father, we lift up prayers for Sandy Ornette, uh, who will be having a heart procedure on April the 9th, as well as our sister, Billy Coley, uh, who will be having foot surgery on April the 22nd. Father, we continually pray for Gary Orr's mother in California uh, with cancer. Be with that family, God. Be with Gary, God. Help us to support uh, them through this difficult time. Father, we continually pray for Mackenzie Soto's uh, stepfather, George, uh, with MS. God, as well as Aaron's uh, mother uh, that's in Massachusetts uh, with cancer. God, we pray that you be with the chemotherapy, be with the doctors, be with Aaron and his family as they uh, will be going back and forth to take care of his mom. And God, as we pray each week, and we've been praying for quite some time, Father, we pray for the the conflict in the Middle East, as well as in the Ukraine. God, we uh, continually pray for those leaders, God, that they will come to the table. God, that uh, they will spare the lives of those that are suffering. And God, that you will bring peace and safety and end up that war. Father, lastly, we want to reach out to uh, the city of Baltimore, Maryland, God, and the, the tragedy there on that bridge and those families that lost loved ones there. Uh, what a tragedy, God. We just pray that... Uh, they will be able to uh, unify those families. God, I pray that you will be with uh, all of the people involved in that situation. And God, that you can bring some comfort uh, to, to that entire area. Again, God, we thank you for this time that we can pray to you. We lift these prayers up in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Uh, we're going to try to uh, limit our three speeches to 15 minutes each so we can get out of here by 8 o'clock. But we have been talking uh, quite some time as a group of elders about trusting God. And we're going to continue to talk about that theme of trusting God. But as we've been going through the themes, we've been discovering some things that we wanted to encourage the body with that we think are, can really help the body be built up, it can help the body grow, and it will help the body to be fruitful. You know, one of the things that, you know, we uh, talk about a lot is the idea of seeking and saving the loss. And I think too often we think of the action rather than a lot of the things that are behind the seeking and the saving. Sometimes we forget this one area that's called works of service. And our theme that we're going to be talking about for a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, is trying to find out what pleases the Lord. Amen? 
And, and, and I was in a study this week, and, and that's what we were talking about. You know, I was with a brother. I said, find out what pleases the Lord. So I'm going to share my first part. I'm going to be talking about works of service. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to read two verses here to kind of get us started tonight. It says, so Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. There's a lot in this passage right here. You know, he's saying that Christ has, you know, done these different things, and he's given these different positions to equip God's people for works of service. And I think what he's saying to us, if you look at it, he says, if we are serving, if we are doing these things, guess what will happen to the body of Christ? It'll be built up. I have been so encouraged the last two months. We have heard from so many different people in the body of Christ that I didn't know stories about. You know, I got to hear Gary Russell and Shelly Russell. I've known them for over 40 years. I was just blown away. You know, there's different people that have shared. And I hope you've enjoyed that. I've had a lot of positive feedback was, man, I really wanted to hear that story. And then we had Women's Day this past Saturday. And again, wow. You know, we had five different, you know, speakers, and I wasn't supposed to be here because it was for the women. And so I was sneaking. I was in the little live sleep screen room with Alan, and I was just blown away. Terry Ellaby, I was crying. <laughs> what, what's, what, you know, that's the body of Christ. We don't want the same people doing the same thing every week. I know y'all want me to preach every time, but I, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> But it's great to hear the body of Christ. Guess what happens when you really can get to, get to have that involvement? It says that the Christ, that this may be, the church will be built up in unity in the faith and of knowledge and the Son of God, and we will become mature. Now, sometimes we think mature is age, but it is not. Write this down if you're writing. Being old doesn't mean you're mature. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Being old doesn't mean you're mature, especially in Christ, because we can always grow in that area. And so he says this idea of works of service, all the parts of the body working together, is going to build the church up, it's going to unify the church, and then it's going to mature the church in Christ. Amen. I preached a couple of weeks ago about the good news, and the the title was, Is the Good News Still Good? And I put up a lot of bullet points on things that I think that are evangelistic that we take for granted. Because again, our definition of evangelist is I invited that guy there, I studied the Bible with him, I baptized him in this water, I'm evangelistic. But guys, there's so many pieces to evangelism that we miss that got all of that happening before he got here. Here's some examples. Kingdom kids. I asked the church that if you were a a kid in kingdom kids, stand up. And it was about 25 people, even including my son who's 40, all stood up. Well, guess what? They were four and five 40 years ago in one of those classes that some of us taught. And now they're disciples of Christ. Is that evangelism? I hope so. The blood drive. I mentioned the blood drive. The people that come on the blood drive will be impacted, will want to know what's happening in this church if we have 100 people give blood. I guarantee you, rather than 10. What do you think they think when there's only 10? And they come in, they see 250 people, they only got 10 volunteers. That could be evangelistic. Contribution. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Contribution. The Bible tells us to be generous. 
That's a gift to be generous. If, if all you can do is give, give. Be generous. Ushering. Take that for granted. Inviting people. Some of us are better at inviting people than others. Being in a community group. Your testimony. Believe it or not, you may not need to know the whole Bible, but if you tell your story to people and you tell them where you were and where you are and how you got there, that's a testimony. Evangelistic. Coming to church. And I'm talking to all you guys that are live streaming too. Come to church. I like seeing you. God likes seeing you. We like seeing each other. Come to church, crossing the aisle. The campus is gone right now, but how, how often do we come from this side and go over there and meet somebody and vice versa? Or do we meet the person we hadn't seen at church and go, that might, that, that might be a visitor. I need to go say hello to that person. Evangelistic. Being a part of the setup team, being a part of the takedown team, going to the hospital to visit somebody. Do you know how encouraging that is? If you're in a hospital and somebody decides to come see you, or you're in the hospital and you have all of these friends, 250, and you're in the hospital for a month and you got zero visitors and your family's not in Gainesville, evangelistic. Giving someone a ride. You say, what? Giving somebody a ride. Okay? Singing on stage. And then I, I added this one. It's not up there, but the canned food drive. Those people, I know, I, I, one of the guys we drop a bag at, at his house, now is a friend of mine at Gainesville Health and Fitness Center. Because he won't put any, any groceries in his bag and I get on him every time, so now he's participating. Matter of fact, the last time I, I forgot to go by his house, he called a church on me. <laughs> See, I got this bag that Randy Scott was supposed to pick up is out here. So I already got him today. Write this down. Guys, evangelism is who we are. It is not what we do. It is who we are. It should be our lifestyle. And it happens through works of service working behind the scene, helping out, being part of the body. Amen? Amen? When I was growing up in the church, the Church of Christ used to talk about what we call the 80-20 church. And we talked about other churches. We probably shouldn't have been doing that. But I always grew up not wanting to be a part of the 80-20 church. And you say, what is the 80-20 church? It's the church where 20% of the people do and give 80% of the service. Who's doing all the works of service? The same 20 people each time. Who do you call for volunteers? The same 20 people each time. And you go, well, why do you do that? He says, well, I can count on, I can count on Adam. I'm not sure about. And so that's what we do. Are you in the 80 or are you in the 20? Here's what you, we need to ask ourselves. Did we say Jesus is Lord? Not, not your head. Did, we, did you say Jesus is Lord? Get in that Baptist tree and come up. If you said Jesus is Lord, you need to do a review of your life. Because if he's Lord, he's still Lord of your time. You can get to anywhere in Gainesville in 27 minutes, okay? You should be here on Wednesday night. You should be at church on Sunday, even if it rains. I was, I was like, it's raining. Nobody's coming to church. What? Come on, man. It rains all the time in Florida. Is he Lord of your time? The next one, is he Lord of your money? Is he Lord of your money, or does he get the last of that? Is he Lord of your service? Is he Lord of your family? If he's Lord of your family, you're going to get your family here. And I, I'm going to stop on that one. Is he Lord of your job? And lastly, 
Is he Lord of your hobbies? Some of us got hobbies that are more important than church. Come on, y'all. Let's not be the 80-20 church. Amen? Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 as I close. One of the questions we're going to talk about tonight is how do I find my gifts? Ephesians 2.10, Paul writes, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Wow. How do I find my gift? Well, guess what? God created you as his handiwork. Okay? He created you for these works of service to do what kind of works? Good works. And guess what? He's already prepared them in advance for you to do. Think about that. You don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed God's already got a plan for you. You just got to go and find out and do something. Don't sit back. You got to go and pursue that. He said, He's created us in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We don't have a lot to do. We just got to show up. Come on. We just got to show up. Amen? Amen. Closing out. Ephesians 4, 14 through 18. Go there with me. Paul closes this passage with this, these words. He says, then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body. There's the tie-in. Of him who is the head, that is Christ. Church belongs to Christ. He is the head of the church, not the elders. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Guys, all of you, all of us are supporting ligaments. When you get old, you're going to realize how important ligaments are. Okay? I've torn something in my shoulder. And I know it's not, it's not surgery but it's right here. It's been hurting for six months, and it's a tiny ligament, and it's like, oh, it's killing me. Somebody say, get surgery. I go, no. It's just a tiny ligament, but I can't do the things with this arm that I used to could do. Some of y'all old people say amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> it says you need every supporting ligament to do what? its part. I'm getting treatment for it. It's going to get better, but I got to get it back in the game, right? I got to get it back. That's how important you are to this body of Christ. You may just be a ligament, but show up, help out, do your part. It says every supporting ligament will grow and build itself up in love as each part does its work. Amen. All right, I get to be the middle child tonight. You know how that goes. Um, I'm going to talk about, my, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit different. Uh, but let's start out with the verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. Uh, this verse is talking about uh, finances, but that's really not the application I want to make. But there's a principle here that I think is, is really important to what we're talking about. Paul tells the Corinthian church, he says, Our desire is not that others may be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there may be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. So as we talk about everybody doing their work and us working together, uh, like Randy talked about, you know, we're not trying to press people to, to overdo. And I, as I look around the room, I see a lot of faces of people who serve a lot. So I want to say, first of all, thank you for your service. And, and I think you guys are great examples in many respects. So I'm going to go through a bunch of stuff. Now, I want to tell you at the front end, I'm not going through all this stuff so you can sign up for all of it, okay? You'll be overwhelmed and stressed out, and that won't go well. Uh, so that's not what we're trying to accomplish here. Did something break? Oh, okay. 
Um, so, uh, you know, that's not our goal. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to look at some things uh, that, most, that most can do as long as they're willing. Then we're going to look at some way we, ways we can use our particular skills. Then we're going to talk about some needs wanting someone to step up that may require a little training. And lastly, we're going to talk about some roles that you may need to fill, uh, that you may fill if you're asked. So let's talk about a few things that um, most of us can do as long as we're willing to do them. Uh, and when I say most can do, not everybody can do these things, and that's okay. I'll, I'll give you a practical example for me. Uh, Randy talked about the blood drive. Every time he talks about the blood drive, I feel guilty, okay? Because I can't give blood anymore. <laughs> I, I've given gallons and gallons and gallons of blood, and my, my veins have so much scar tissue that now I just get stabbed and nothing good happens anymore. So I've quit trying. Uh, but every time they give blood, I say, oh, I ought to go back there. But I know it's not a good idea. So that's okay if you can't. Don't feel guilty if you can't do some of this stuff. So let's start off. You know, everybody can give to others. As Randy mentioned, make visitors feel welcome. It's a, it's a fairly simple thing, but it's really important. We can all jump in and do that. Uh, serving in kingdom kids. Most of us can serve in kingdom kids. Uh, and man, if, if, if you want to just make somebody's day, look up Randy or Casey and say, hey, I haven't served in kingdom kids lately. Could I sign up for that? I promise you, you will make a friend for life. Uh, and that's something that, that most of us can do. Usher, Randy mentioned that. Um, you know, we, that's a really important job that uh, most of us can do, and, and we can jump in and help out there. Uh, game day parking. I've seen most of you uh, come out for game day parking. Uh, but, you know, that's a great thing that helps a great cause, and so that's something uh, that we can jump in and do. Help out with food and events when they arise. We are a people that seem to like events. We have them a lot. Uh, and, you know, so when, when somebody says, hey, we need food or we need somebody to, you know, help out with that, jump in, help out. Uh, if we have a building work day, um, you know, that's a great time to spend time together and, and do things together. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things like this. At the end of this line, it says, be somebody else. Well, what does that mean? Here's what I mean. A lot of times we think somebody else will do that. <laughs> well, be somebody else, you know, <laughs> jump in and do that stuff. Uh, and we'll all get, we'll be in a better spot. All right. Ways that we can use our particular skills. Um, We'll, we'll talk about a lot of these things more in the coming weeks, uh, but we've all been given abilities and skills. Uh, am I making those available to God and his family? Now, when I say, am I making those available, I, I'm not necessarily even saying you have, to, you have to donate your time all the time. I mean, if, I'm, if you're a plumber uh, and that's what you do for a living, I don't necessarily expect you to do plumbing work at the building, um, you know, for free all the time, okay? That's not what my point. Although I will say right up front, if you're a plumber, please come see me because I, <laughs> I have some stuff that we're trying to deal with here. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we have a lot of skills and abilities. Are those made available to God? And, you know, a lot of times we can give what we have uh, to the church in a great way, uh, and that's wonderful when we can do that. Um, what do you love doing? What do you love doing? You know, that, that would be a different answer for a lot of us. Use that to serve others. Um, Levy Howard was in our, our prayer list. Um, you know, this, this jumped to my mind when I was thinking about this point. Levy liked to pull weeds. Did anybody have that on their list, the stuff they love doing? Nope, I didn't think so. Oh, Bob Cantway. Okay, you're, you and Levy are brothers. Levy made a, a lifetime of pulling weeds for people because he enjoyed doing it. And, you know, he would say, hey, you know, I mean, if you don't, he didn't even want to be paid. He'd just say, you know, donate some money to Christian Family Services or whatever you want to donate it to. But he pulled weeds all over Gainesville for decades. <laughs> It's, that's a simple thing that he used for God. Whatever you do, use it for God. It'll, it'll, it'll help. Um, you know, there's a lot of specific things. I, I wrote down a few of them. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you like music and you want to participate in the music ministry. Maybe, uh, maybe you, you want to help out with the AV and tech stuff. Uh, maybe you're an expert in information technology. I promise you we could use that value 
technical skill. Uh, maybe you're good at doing websites or social media. I mean, uh, and a lot of these things, we have people that are doing them, but there's a lot to get done. They could probably use some help, uh, or sometimes there's not enough people doing these things. Uh, if you have, you know, as I mentioned, building-related skills are always welcome. Trust me, this place is old and it's in bad shape. Uh, you know, I mean, we love the building. It's got lots of great history. Uh, but, you know, with lots of great history come lots of repairs. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, and so, you know, we can use the help, uh, both hands-on and design-oriented stuff. We have exciting days ahead. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but, you know, maybe you have special abilities related to caring for people. Man, people need love. People need to be served. And some of you are really exceptional at that. Uh, you know, maybe it's putting together food trains for people who are sick. Maybe it's, it's taking care of, of widows and orphans. Uh, you know, whatever your, your particular gift is, uh, use that in a great way. Use the particular skills God has given to you. Um, there are some great needs at the church uh, that are wanting someone to step up and take them on. Let me give you some examples, and we'll talk more about these in the, the weeks to come. Uh, I'll say up front that training is required for several of these, but that's okay. Um, you know, marriage dynamics are a similar program. Man, what a great ministry. <clears throat> you know, we need to have somebody in the church that is, is trained and able to facilitate for one of these kinds of programs. You know, Randy talked about the idea of evangelism. Trust me, if you can help people to grow and mature in their marriage, people will come and will want to know about God if that's available. Um, and, you know, it helps us uh, within the church. So, you know, it'd be great to have somebody to take that on. We don't have anybody in that position right now. Somebody to give dating and premarital counseling. You know, the college students just keep getting married, and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, and so, you know, we got to help them out. Uh, you know, we have people who do that, but we can use some more people in that kind of situation. Um, helping with the, with the planning of building uh, renovations. You know, we just closed on the lands. This, this building needs a lot of work. We're going to be getting, pulling people together to help out with that. Not, I mean, not immediately, but that's going to be happening over, over the months to come. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to need your, your thoughts and your prayers and your sweat equity, uh, not necessarily doing the work, but helping get that put together so that we can uh, get this building brought up to speed. Uh, so that's a place that we can help out. Uh, and, you know, if you have special abilities in that, let us know. Uh, community service, uh, coordinating hope events. That's a big need. That's an opportunity for us to give to the community uh, and serve. And, we, you know, the, so having people to take that on is important. Um, you know, the, the, we talked tonight about the uh, canned food drive. You know, that needs coordination to get that done. Mentoring ministry for uh, mentoring different ministry groups. You know, we've got youth and family. Uh, you know, they need, they need people to be involved to support them. You know, we love the work that they're doing, uh, but we've got to get other people to be involved in there. You want to have impact in the community? Serve that group. I promise you, if, this, if you want the church to grow, have it be a church where parents know that I can get my teen over there and they're going to become spiritual and they're going to do well in school and they're going to, they're going to be successful as they go through their teenage years. I, they'll line up for that. Uh, you know, I mean, mentoring the campus ministry, uh, that's an important thing. You know, that's something that we've done for a long time. Um, you know, I see the Hankersons here. They're doing, the, they're doing the tour. You know, we want their kid to come here, and they want to feel like it, they're going to be cared for. We don't want that child to, to go to the, some of the places her parents went. You know, we wanted to go to UF. <laughs> but they've got to be loved. Uh, if they're going to, yes, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. So mentoring is a, is a great thing. Uh, career counseling. Uh, you know, we've got people that need help and, and you know, getting situated. All of these things are things that we can jump in and do. Uh, and you may need some training for, but they're great opportunities to serve. I'm trying to, to help you get inspired about some of the different things that we can do. 
A few to close out with that we'll talk more in the weeks to come, but roles that are needed that you may be asked to fill. You know, you might be asked to serve as a deacon. Um, you know, we, that's something that's a great need. It's a biblical role. Uh, so, you know, we, it's something that we need to develop and, and have in place more than we do now. Uh, that's something that's, uh, that's a great thing. Um, being a community group leader. You know, it's, it's probably more common that the elders get somebody to come to them and say, look, I really don't want to be a community group leader anymore than it is that somebody comes to them and says, I would love to lead a community group. How can I get to a point where I can do that? We need community group leaders. That's really an important part of the church. Uh, being a teacher, um, you, know, I, I, you know, we have some people that teach, but we need more people that teach. Um, you know, the people who teach aren't getting any younger and they get tired. Uh, you know, we need more teachers. If you want to be a teacher, let me know. I, you know, we need more people to do teaching. Uh, and so that's an important thing. Being a board member, uh, the, the thankless job of being in the room and talking about all the stuff that nobody else wants to talk about. Uh, it's not that exciting, but it's important. And uh, we appreciate the people that do that. Uh, you know, those are, so, those are some special things, uh, but they're things that you might be asked to do at some point. I want to close out with this, this verse, which absolutely cracked me up when I read it. This is the new version of the NIV's uh, translation of the parable of the talents. It's now called the parable of the bags of gold. Uh, talents were actually a financial unit of measure, and so it's a legitimate translation. But we do our talents campaign. I think, may, Rand, maybe we need to change it next year to the bags of gold campaign. It doesn't have quite the same feel. I don't, I don't know. But it, so it, at the end of this parable, um, and this is the, actually, it's this parable where we get our common usage of the word talent. It said, so take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. You can go back and read that whole parable. But the point of this verse as we close out is, if we take what God has given us and serve him with us, he will bless us with more. Amen. That's really an important principle. And I think that if, we, if what we have and what we, God has given us if we just bury it and we don't use it, it doesn't stick around. So we want to be a group of people who uses the gifts that God has given us and takes advantage of the opportunities to serve. And we'll learn about more, more about those in the coming weeks. But I'm just asking you to dream a little and look for ways that you can serve. And we're very open to ideas, so talk to us and talk to each other. But let's figure out ways that we can all do our part and serve in some of these roles. So great to be here and not talk about money. It's, uh, I know you're like, what? Um, I really appreciate what the other guys have shared. They've left me with about nothing, so. Um, no problem, though. I, uh, I want to try to tie things off um, here and talk about gifts. You know, part of what we're looking at is service and gifts. And so uh, the guys kind of asked me, so, well, you know, how do we figure out our gifts? How do we, you know, figure out what this, you know, Romans 12 talks about. If your gift is, then do a lot of it. And talks about a number of things there. And I thought about it and went, I'm not really sure. So I'm going to share some other things with you. In uh, Romans chapter 6, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're not talking about that gift tonight. That's going to be Sunday. Bring a guest. We're going to talk about that amazing gift. But it is the reason why we do all of this. It's the reason why we are doing the things we do is because the gift that that he gave us. And then in, uh, in Romans 12, where it talks about all that, um, he says, have a sober judgment. So, you know, sometimes we want to do things 
and maybe we're not quite ready to do it. You know, we, we coach, uh, you know, young folks sometimes, and they want to have this amazing dating relationship, and they haven't figured out some things that they need to figure out to even handle a relationship. I asked a brother one time, I said, so what's your ideal sister? And he gave me this description. I said, well, if God gave it to you today, could you lead her? Could you help her make it to heaven? Could you really be the kind of godly man that she needs, that she wants to follow and be? And so sometimes we may not be quite ready. God's got to do some work on us. And so Romans 12 says, have a sober judgment. Then he says uh, in verse uh, 6, he says, um, we have different gifts according to the grace given each of us. You know, we all have gifts. They may not have the same gifts. We may not have the same number of gifts. The parable of the talents talks about that, or the bags of gold. But we all have gifts. We all have something to give. And so part of this is, again, I don't want to discourage you, but I want us to have a mindset of when I come, and if you're a guilty soul, please don't take this wrong, but when I come to church, do I come to get or to give? You know, when I'm... When I'm asked to do something, do I go, well, do I like to do that? Then maybe I'll do it. But if I don't like to do it, then I'm probably not going to jump in and do it. Um, There's a lot of things that God wants us to do because there's a need. You know, I, when I was a young man, was kind of full of pride and, you know, a lot of things, very insecure. But I remember going to a rock concert on a Saturday night and hearing the group, yes, that'll date me. And it was here at Alligator Alley in the old Florida gym, and the sound was great, even at the gym, it sounded great. And I came to church on Sunday, and the sound stunk. It was bad, you couldn't hear. It was feedback, phones were ringing. It was, uh, <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was terrible. And, and I went, that's not right. I didn't know anything about sound. But I got with some people said, I want to help with this. It's a need, I see. And I was in high school. And so, you know, God will put things on your heart sometime. It's affected my whole career and what I do. And I got to tell you, I had a lot of pride in the way God dealt with it. You know, sometimes you go, God, help me with this thing. And we want to have this divine light come down and just cure us of what we have. Well, no, he gave me a soundboard. Because when you're doing sound, the only time people respond or give you feedback is when you mess up. When you do everything right, nobody even notices. And so if you're like full of pride and want to get recognition and strokes and, hey, tell me how I'm doing, man, sound is not the place to be. (laughs) You know, you're going to be all messed up. But it was really good for me. And God used that to really refine me. Um, Trying to get my buttons correct here. So... um, What about the gifts we have? What are we going to do with those? How do we find them? How do we use them? You know, where do we start? I think we have to start out with um, who am I and what I do? Um, And what do we do with our gifts? You know, in Isaiah, there's this concept that God introduces. In Isaiah 64, he says, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. Isn't that a great statement? Mm -hmm. God is our dad. And he says, we are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. So he says that we're clay. I'm not sure, do you like being clay? I mean, clay is basically this grubby stuff in the ground next to dirt. It's not super complimentary. But what does God do with that? In, uh, in Romans chapter uh, 9, he says, But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay pottery for special purposes and sp- pottery for common use? You know, a lot of times with God, we ask why. And this passage talks about, you know, God is sovereign. God has a plan. He's not trying to harm you or mess you up, but he's, we're not always going to understand the why, and he's not always going to explain it to us. You know, 
a lump of clay to four, so a pound of clay. You could go dig it up the dirt, it's free, but if you buy the really good stuff, it's about 30 bucks. You know, our value when we come to God is pretty much like dirt. That, that's who we are. And I'm not saying that to put anybody down. I think we just need to see the reality that what we bring to God is really nothing of value. All of our skills, all of our education, all of our money, all those things, they're, to God, they're, they're, they're a lump of clay. And so as we look at that and what we're going to do, what are we going to do about that? You know, God is going to get in there and start forming us. You know, my wife has worked with clay. She's gotten on a wheel and actually made pottery. She actually made some stuff we have in our home. She's made some small cups and some, uh, a platter, and she, it's just really great. But she's, she shared with me about, you know, doing the pottery thing on the wheel, it's like, it's, it's really tough work. The potter has to put loving pressure on this piece of clay and form it and mold it. You know, he has to take and shape it and make it into what it's going to be. I'm not sure we always want to be shaped. And it's messy. You know, our lives can be very messy. God is working the clay all through that. Sometimes we don't recognize it, we don't understand, we can't see where he's going, but he has a vision for us, and he's working the clay. He's always working it, it's on the wheel, and he's spinning it around. You know, he's doing that loving pressure to mold us. You know, sometimes he uses brothers and sisters. You know, God can use anything. He used a donkey in the Old Testament, you know? John the Baptist said, you know, God can make, you know, children of Abraham out of rocks. I mean, God can do anything. He can handle our lives. He can handle our messes. He's the potter. And so, as he does that, you know, God has a plan for us, for the church with a body. You know, we mold each other. As we get together, as we help each other, as we love each other, as we do the things that Randy and Randy talked about, as we do all that, we, we're all part of molding each other in ways that we don't realize. God is using you, even the mess, even while you're on the wheel, even while he's molding you, he uses you in a great way. He uses what you have to give. And so he keeps molding us as we go through. He keeps working on it. You know, a friend of mine, Martin Dardis, a lot of you know him, he was converted out of the P.K. Young kind of ministry. A lot of us were over there working with the performing arts ministry there. And his whole family got converted. And Martin, he wouldn't mind me sharing, he's, he's a big introvert. He would almost be a hermit. I mean, he just, that he's a really great guy. He's smart. He loves stuff. But he looked and saw we needed help with sound. We needed people to get in there. So he came in and just started doing stuff. He said, show me how to, show me how to run cables. And we did. Show me how to set things up. Show me how to place a mic. Show me how those knobs work on the board. Help me learn. And he jumped into it, and he became such a reliable person on the sound that's great. Again, and, and of course, Gary here and so many others, but, but Martin jumped in into something that actually was very uncomfortable for him. And it, it became this thing as God molded him, and as he grew spiritually, he, he said, I love this stuff said, I wish I could have known my career this. If I were younger, I would change careers. I mean, that's how much he loved it. Now, he's abandoned us. No, I'm kidding. He's, uh, he's, I'm getting over this. I'm, you know, I'm struggling. He moved up to be with his kids and grandkids, go figure, up in Atlanta. But no, they're doing great, and we love them to death. And he and Rita are there. But there's they're just an example of God taking somebody and molding them, seeing a need, giving his gift. And it's just a great example. It's a great vision of what God does with all of us as he molds us. You know, at the end of the process, this clay gets put into fire. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I don't think I like fire. I don't think I like the heat sometimes. The heat from his word when it's convicting, when it's challenging, when it's so hard, when a brother's like, hey, you know, we need to talk. And, and get over this. You know, I don't, I don't think I like the heat, but the fire is really important. You know, we look at this, you know, what will God do as he molds us and as we give our gifts? He will make us useful. He will make us into vessels 
that are about his purpose and that are very useful. He will mold us into things that are both beautiful and of great use and value for his purpose because that's what he does. You know, God has a plan. God has a vision for each one of us. And he has a plan, and he wants to mold us into exactly the kind of vessel that he wants to do. And he winds up with these beautiful vessels of our lives. You have no idea how beautiful your lives are. The character that you develop, the integrity that you have, it's so rare. Talk to anybody in, in business that employs people. It's rare. The values that you have, the godliness, the care, overall the love. And that's ultimately what God is doing and he's trying to make things very beautiful out of our lives. You know, I was looking on the internet at, at some pottery stuff as I was preparing this, and I found this vase, and it's worth over $41 million. So you might want to buy it. No, I'm not, I'm not paying that. Each one of you is worth infinitely more than that vase. And that vase started out as a piece of lump in the dirt, a piece of clay. And today, it's worth over $41 million. You know, God does even more than that with us. It's just amazing. So Randy Scott read all my scriptures, but I'm going to throw them by here. <laughs> but I did want to say, and that's, that's great, but I did want to say that in Ephesians, he talks about uh, so that the body of Christ may be built up. It is about Christ being built up, not us. Right, Our service is about really be being molded in what God wants us to be for that. In Ephesians 3, God really makes an amazing promise here. He says, now to him, talking about God, who's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Now get your head around that. We can measure a lot. We can measure the distance it is to the edge of the universe. Did you know that? It's about 9 billion light years, give or take. They get a big, long tape measure. No, it's, uh, you know, we can measure some pretty big things. And God says he's going to do immeasurably more. You cannot even measure how much more God is going to do by his power at work. How? Within us. I think we missed that. Like, wait a minute, God. You're going to have some power in me, and it's going to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. So it's for all of us. This was not just to a select few back in the New Testament. This was not just to kind of people that did special things. This is to all of us. Forever and ever, amen. You know, this is, a, this is an amazing promise of what God does. You know, God has a great vision and a dream for us. You know, in Ephesians 4, Randy Scott read it again. You know, it talks about as each part does its work. You know, the body is so dependent on each other. Any part of it that's missing is really tough. So we have these gifts. What do we do with them? You know, we give because we love. Ultimately, that's it. Jesus says, they'll know you're my disciples. Why? Because of your love for each other. It's very important. Um, you know, we start out as a lump of clay. We end up a priceless vessel that God really uses. You know, how do we find and give our gifts? Trust the potter. As we're trusting God, let's trust the potter. And the result of our giving amazing gifts is amazing love and joy. I just had to put this picture in. I couldn't resist. <laughs> you know, I appreciate your time. appreciate all that you've had tonight. Let's give our gifts. Let's find them. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you feel loved and built up and not overwhelmed. You know, it's just each part does its piece. And then God does this amazing thing with all of us. Let's close with a prayer and you can be dismissed. God, we love you. Thank you for the way you love us. And God is, thank you for your word. Thank you for the whole body that you have, especially here in Gainesville and what you're building. God, help us to build in the way that you want us to. God, help us to just pray and really want to be molded by the potter. God, help us to not resent being a lump of clay or the pressure, the loving pressure you put on us or the, the fire we have to go through and we're in, but God, to look at those opportunities as you're really working in our lives and seeing the character you're building and the things that you're growing so that we can be useful for your purpose. 
God, we love you. Thank you so much for our time tonight. Thank you for the way you love us and bless us. God, it is so amazing. And God, we want all we can of that immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Thank you for that promise. We want to grab hold of it. And God, help us to be useful, uh, to be the men and women you call us to be, to handle what you're bringing our way. God, thank you for loving us. Help us to love your whole lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I had pictures. <laughs> but I only took 15 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. You guys too. It was good.